All right, I got a question for you guys. How many of you guys are using the 2K primer in the shop, in a production shop? I know a lot of the uh, restoration guys are still sticking with the 2K and a lot of, you know, slick sands and polyester primers like that because they have time. But in the production world, that 2K to me is starting to really slow down production because you guys know that all the insurance companies are pushing to get these cars in and out of these shops, which puts us in a crunch to get them done and still give them a quality repair. So in this video, I have a special guest all the way from England with a light that I wanted to show you guys because I'm thinking about going strictly to the UV primer on our filler work. That way I don't have to wait at all for this stuff to dry because sometimes if you get on it too soon and then you bake that product, you could have sand scratches come back the next day because that primer isn't fully cured especially in an air conditioned shop like this. So years back when you were in a hot shop, that place was burning up. It would get to 90, 100 degrees almost down here in Florida. And that primer the next day was definitely cured up. But I've seen here now with this place being that we have an air conditioned shop, I don't think that that primer is fully cured. So I'm thinking about switching out to the UV primer on all the filler work. That way I have no chance of shrinkage and everything can be done that day, boom, boom, right in and out. Simon, go ahead and uh, give them a little bit of insight on your uh, background and stuff like that with the company. Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so IST Intech, uh, we have been in the UV LED curing industry for a decade. Um, primarily, a lot of the UV equipment that we manufacture goes into uh, printing applications, uh, but we've been looking to diversify into different applications for, for a while. Uh, we actually got in contact or we joined forces with BASF almost three or four years ago uh, when they came out with their UV uh, curable consumable primer um, and we took one of our products that we already had, uh, basically we put a handle on it, uh, put a cable on it and turned it into a handheld um, UV LED um, curing light uh, for auto refinishing, composite repair, fiberglass resin repair, bird strikes on uh, wind turbines, that sort of thing. Um, and then the natural progression from that was to make it a portable unit by putting a couple of uh, commercially available DeWalt batteries on the side and turning it into a portable UV curing light. This is the light that you're gonna be showing today, using today. Um, we, as far as we're concerned, it's the most powerful handheld UV LED product on the market. Um, the technology that's in there is all about the fact that at IST Intech, we are LED experts, right? We're not auto refinish experts. Our, our expertise is in the technology of the LEDs. Uh, that means that we can produce really powerful, intense lights. Um, and you'll see in the light as well that the actual physical design uh, gives us about a four inch uh, square uh, output window which is really good for the for making sure that you get a good hom homogeneous uh, cure uh, the power means that it's a very fast repair um, anything between sort of 15 and 30 seconds for a fairly small panel repair um, and because of the power what a lot of people in the industry are concerned about is the longevity of the repair okay that's one of the reasons why the uv led is taking a little bit more time to come on onto the market people see uh, a, the, a fabulous return on the investment for the speed of the repair right. but people just want to know what how that repair is going to be in six months right. three years um, and so it's taking a little bit of time but we are very confident that with the uh, output performance of our light we are getting a, a very good quality durable cure all right so this here is the unit and the first thing i noticed about this one here was the size of the actual head of the light look at the size of that thing and uh to run that size light it actually has two battery packs on it so he was explaining to me that the biggest thing about the lights is getting that heat off of the bulbs. That way they're gonna be able to cure that primer. And this one, I guess, releases the uh, heat towards the back of the light. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing in there. You guys know you gotta use the glasses because you don't wanna look at these lights. They're very, very powerful. And 
what really you know made me interested in this light was that this company does nothing but lights they're not in the paint business they're not making spray guns they're just doing these lights and that means that they're going to obviously have a really good product out there so this will be the unit that we're trying out there you guys see it ac 500 we'll go ahead and get this thing uh loaded up with the battery packs get in the booth and i'll show you guys the primer we're using we'll talk with pat a little bit about that and what we're going to be doing for preparation for the uv primer as well all right first thing we're going to do is get that uv primer we'll go ahead and make sure it's shooken up i haven't used it from the last time you guys seen it i wanted to get a different light and try it out with that so this is the 151 170. now this here pat go ahead and explain to them the uh, benefits of the UV primer versus the 2K and what it's good to go over, what substrates and different things like that. So the UV primer goes over a 220 scratch because it needs that etch to really hang on to. Uh, one thing good about UV primer, once it's cured, it's cured. It's not gonna shrink uh, and it, it's a lifetime repair. And so it's direct to metal? It, direct to metal, and aluminum, it's galvanized. And also you said it can go on the plastic with the adhesion promoter? It can up to three mils. You don't want to over apply it to the plastic because it's not flexible, it will right. crack. So up to three mils with the adhesion promoter. Our adhesion promoter is 934-10. Uh, you, you would spray a coat of that on there, let it flash, and then you can apply your UV primer. UV primer is a half coat, 20 to 30 second flash, and then a full wet coat. Uh, just be careful on the bumpers because you don't want it, the mills really pile up. Right. So five mills is probably the max you want to go on a metal, three mills on plastic. All right, let's get this shaken up and uh, put it in the gun. But you do have to use a 1-0, right? Yes, that is very important. They want you to put the coats on thin. That way you can get a nice cure through the uh, light. So let's go ahead and get it shaken up. All right, so we're gonna talk about now the prep work with the uh, primer. This is gonna be a little bit different. They want you to get a coarser scratch in the end of the repair. That way that UV primer is gonna bond good. So what do we got going on here, Pat? Well, I always, 220, you need a 220 scratch. So pass the body work. 220. 220, then you could 320 out. Right. But you're gonna put this UV primer half coat first, and I would put it farthest out and then stay in me. Work your way back into the repair. Correct. All right, so we got it loaded up. We've got our 1.0 head on this gun. They want you to have that size. That way you can put it on. You don't want to build it up too much. The whole key to this is getting a good cure. So if you put too much on, you will not get that primer to dry and you will be in a world of trouble with it. That's why we have this professional grade light coming in. So this here is the repair. We do have some barrel metal edges, but this is going to be a direct to metal product. So we're going to be good. We've already sanded it. We've cleaned it and we're going to go ahead and get suited up and start applying it. All right. So one thing we are going to do before we go ahead and we apply the primer is we're going to take a mill reading of the area that we're going to be applying the primer to. We'll go past the body work. That way we can gauge it off of this because our primer will be out here and that way we can test how many mills we're actually applying of the UV primer. So Pat wanted to do that. That way we can be assured we're putting the right amount on and we will not have any problems with it. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll get back into applying it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do our mill reading on it now. 6.5, right there. All right, let's go ahead and hit it now with our primer and then we'll test it after we apply it.
All right, we're going to go ahead now and get it cured up. You got to put the glasses on. Make sure you always cover up with this uh, type of uh, light. So we got it ready to go. This one here has a double click on it. So you hit the trigger once and then you hit the trigger again. And uh, we're going to go ahead now and try it. We're going to start from the top to the bottom and then we're going to go ahead and just work our way down with it and we'll work our way around. How's that going? Does it look like I'm doing it all right? Yeah, that's okay. That's okay? Yeah. Come all the way to the edge. All the way past. Yeah. Just that's all you did, making sure you're getting the full coverage right. That's the fan thing here. And that's what I was talking about. That fan kicking in is what's going to help that light do its job without it overheating. So that's one of the biggest points that uh, Simon was telling me about this product. All right, so there it is. You guys see it? We hit it with our light. And you normally don't want to sand in here. You guys know that, but we're doing a Chalk, test. Chalking right up. We wanted to show you guys how fast it is. I'm not going to move the car back out. I'm not going to sand the whole thing in here, obviously. We're just going to test it in an area. That way you guys can see that this thing is dry. So you see it powdering up, falling to the ground. You're dirtying up the booth, Pat. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, so you guys see the light, and uh, now I want to talk to uh, Simon again about why that this one here has the certain wavelengths and everything that's for this primer. Sure. Um, I can't really stress enough that this is a process, and that means the chemistry and the light have to be optimized for each other, uh -huh. okay? UV, all UV lights are not the same. Um, there are different power outputs and particularly what's most important is the wavelength of the light that is coming out of the unit. The chemistry has what is called photo initiators in it. They react to certain wavelength of light. Um, UV lights can come in a range of wavelengths from 365 up to 405. So it's very key that the light and the chemistry are matched. This light was tested and validated in BSF's laboratories for this chemistry. Right. And so the two really do need to be used in conjunction um, and not just any UV light that you can, you can buy off Amazon, right? right. So um, yeah, it's really important that the, the two are optimized as a process together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing back out of here. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this here light. So. These lights aren't cheap, but one thing you have to understand is that this is gonna get you through these jobs that much quicker. So if you're able to prime and paint those jobs all in within the same window of that hour, you're not priming them, setting them outside, getting back to them the next day. You're gonna be moving through that job so quickly that to me that that light's price will be paid for in probably about a month's time and maybe even faster for some of you guys that are doing a lot of production work. So, all right, you guys see it there. That's 11.9, about five mils, and that's what they're recommending that you put on because you are gonna sand off a lot of that product when you block it out and get it ready for paint. So, all right, we're just unwrapping it, and Pat was telling me that he's got most of his, you know, big, big shops using this primer. So, the nice thing about it is there's no waste, there's no reducer, there's no hardener. It's just the one product that has to be cured. And even if you guys were to use something like this at the house, you could always pull it out in the sun and let it dry as well. So to me, this is probably what I'm gonna be using now all the time, especially since I got that top of the line light. So let's get this thing out of here. All right, so I think I'm sold now on the UV primer. Now that I got the correct wavelength for the BASF product, this stuff is drying up phenomenal. So for me as a painter, the last thing I want to do is worry about that primer being dry because I can make a beautiful paint job with a nice clean finish, slicked out. But if that thing goes outside and gets hot and then that primer being it's the foundation sucks into those scratches, that's the last thing I want to do because that means I'm either going to have to redo that job if they're really coarse or I'm going to have to buff it out. So this to me is the new way things are going in the industry. I see a lot of guys using the UV putties. And now that we have the right light, I think I'm not gonna use anything but the UV primer unless it's on something like an overall paint job to me, that wouldn't make any sense. But in the collision world and in the production world, we're doing smaller repairs, which will work perfectly with this light that we have. So I'm gonna let you guys finish up by listening to Simon tell you about the company, 
where it's at, where you can find it. And also I'm gonna leave everything in the description in this video about the company as well as the light. So go to istintech.com, search out the AC product page and you can learn all about our handheld curing lights there. Um, anybody has any questions or, or comments about the light, you can come to me directly, Simon Roberts at sroberts at istintech.com email. All right, so I appreciate you coming all the way from England to uh, show me that beautiful light. No problem. What did you think of it, Pat? I like the light a lot. Didn't heat the panel up and it cured it. So it's top of the line and we got top of the line paint. We shouldn't have nothing but great outcomes. So I think I'm going to just go ahead now, being that that thing is dry, just go ahead, sand it, shoot it, and get it done. That's it. No shrinkage. <laughs> thanks, All right, Brad. thanks a lot. Thank you.